How can we show thanks or gratitude to God? The initial statement that we have in the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple, the first temple dedicated in the modern-day Restoration, says this, Thanks be to thy name, O Lord God of Israel, who keepest covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants who walk uprightly before thee with all their hearts. There is a lot going on in this verse, and I want to spend a few minutes looking at what the significant words are, what they mean, and how it's a symbol or a guidepost for us to show gratitude and thanks to God. Let's begin with this idea of how we talk about God keep us covenant. So what covenant are we talking about? Let's turn back to Genesis chapter 17. And let's recall the story of Abraham. And when Abram, or Abraham, was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And then God goes on and says, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, this is a summary of the Abrahamic promises, or more specifically, the promises that God gave to Abraham. That covenant is an immutable covenant. God made an eternal covenant to bless Abraham and his posterity with priesthood, posterity, and prosperity. That covenant God is bound to keep. Now, of course, we as individuals also have to do things in order to receive the blessings that God has freely offered. Now, it's interesting, there isn't anything we can do to stop God from delivering on those promises to the world. We can do things to stop those promises being delivered to, to our own lives or perhaps to those within our realm of influence, but we cannot stop the Word of God. And this is how God keeps His covenant. He has always kept his covenant to Abraham. And in every generation, when he has had an opportunity with a righteous people, he has delivered those promises to them. Let me give an example that was preserved in the Old Testament purposely to testify to all readers that God will keep his covenant. You might remember a couple generations after Abraham, the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt. Now, let's listen to what happens. God heard their groaning. This is the Israelites suffering in bondage. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. So, God is a God of covenants. He made a promise that he would give property, priesthood, posterity, and prosperity to Abraham's posterity. If you turn to Exodus chapter 6, we hear God further explaining what he will do to keep his end of the bargain to provide these opportunities and these blessings for his people. Now, of course, they could choose to reject it. We'll talk about that in a minute because God freely offers this gift, just like he freely offers the gift of Jesus. We cannot do anything to stop God from freely offering Jesus to us. We can choose to walk away from the gift. We can choose to reject the gift. Just like the ancient Israelites sometimes, too often, unfortunately, chose to reject the free offering from God. So, Exodus chapter 6, verse 2 through 8, God spoke, spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. I just find that powerful. God is a covenant-making and a covenant-keeping God. He will remember his covenant. At the Kirtland Temple, which is where children of Israel are now being gathered in modern-day temples, the very first statement is, thanks be to thy name, O Lord God of Israel, who keepest covenant. And again, the Old Testament was preserved in part to show evidence of God making and keeping his covenant, as well as showing examples of how people did or did not keep their end of the bargain to keep the covenant. So, I want to turn back to Genesis 17 for just a moment and look at these significant phrases that God shares with um, Abraham. God says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, if we actually looked at this in the Hebrew, the phrase walk before me literally means to walk face-to-face -face with me, meaning by my side so we can be seeing each other. 
Don't be in front of me and don't be behind me. Be with me. Like in a friendship relationship, we, we are unified and moving together. And when it says, and be thou perfect, the real meaning of the word perfect in Hebrew, the contextual meaning is be loyal. So it's very significant. God has made promises that he will do certain things for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their posterity. And God is loyal to those promises. The scriptures are replete with examples of God being loyal to those promises that he has made. What he asks from us in return is to be loyal to him. You might hear the word to be perfect or to be righteous. You can just translate that as be loyal. And that is part of the purpose of temples. Is It's to remind us and to invite our loyalty to God. Is to remind us of God's covenants, to remind us of all that God's given to us. I find it so significant that at the beginning of the Restoration, God commands the building of a temple, and one of the first things that is said at the dedication is thanks to God who keep his covenant and show us mercy unto thy servants who walk uprightly before thee with all their hearts, just like Abraham was commanded to walk before God and to be perfect. So wherever you are, take heart that God wants to be with you, that his promises are real, they're sure, and they will not go away. They're there for you to receive and all you need to do is turn to God and to receive that embrace and do not walk away from him. Stay with him, keep your temple covenants, keep your baptismal covenants, and you will find the peace and joy that he desires for all of his children. Thank you.